Hey everybody, so this is our next project. This is a little table that was given to me and I want to pour the top of it. So the top of it is Formica and it's kind of got some little scratches on it and I've already started by sanding it down just a little bit just to kind of take off the super shiny part of it. The rest of the table looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, I'll definitely pour over the side, so I'm not concerned with this part here, but I'm not sure if I want to leave the rest of it with the stained finish that's on it. I mean, there's a little bit of stuff right here, but it's not horrible. And then the little feet could use some attention. I think if I use just a really fine steel brush, I think that would kind of brighten those up a bit. So the question to you is, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of put this out to you as a little bit of a vote or give me your opinion. Would you leave the base of it natural wood or would you paint it? And we're going to pour the top of it with yellows, whites, and silver. So my thought is that the base of it could be painted black or it could also be painted dark gray. So here's the beginning project. I'm going to uh, go ahead and spray the top of it with some Bullseye 123 primer just to get it ready. And then uh, next up, we're gonna pour it. So stay tuned. All right, so I've got the tabletop all ready to pour. And what I've done since the first part of this video was to prime it with this Bullseye Zinser 123 primer. Um, I did lightly sand it and then I spray painted that. It's been sitting for a couple of days just because I haven't had time to get back to it. And then I'll also pop a picture in. I did put a big trash bag around the base of it and tape that to the bottom of the top just so that I know that the paint is gonna spill over the sides. I want it to because I want it to cover these edges. So I just did that to help protect it. And then the colors I'm using today are yellow medium. I'm also using lemon yellow. The yellow medium is a master's touch paint from Hobby Lobby. And the lemon yellow is from Soho. And then I also have my custom silver mixed up. And this is the Liquitex basic silver <clears throat> and my Rust-Oleum glitter, silver glitter paint mixed with my pouring medium. All of my paints have been mixed with my pouring medium which is four cups of Floetrol, one cup of glue all, a half a cup of Liquitex pouring medium, and a quarter cup of water. So all of my paints have been mixed with that. And then my final color is the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White. So I've decided that I'm gonna do six cups. They'll all be flip cups. And these are five ounce cups. So I'm thinking I'm going to probably fill, definitely fill the middle one all the way up. And then the outer ones probably to at least four ounces of paint, which would give me about 25 ounces of paint. And hopefully that will cover this nicely. I don't want to waste paint, but I want to make sure that I have enough to, to cover it all. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with the lemon yellow in each cup. And I'm just going to continue to layer my paints up. And then next I'll go in with the darker yellow. This is the yellow medium. I don't particularly love the yellow medium, but I did want a darker shade of yellow to it. And I figured with the white getting mixed into it, it's definitely going to lighten that anyway. So I think I'll be okay with it. This is the custom silver. And this is the bling that I'm adding to this tabletop. As a lot of you already know, I love my bling. So and then I'm just going to go ahead and add white and I'll continue to layer these cups up and I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this part so that you don't have to watch all of it. In fact, what I may do is just go ahead and cut to where all of these are poured. So hang tight. All right, so I have my paints all layered in my cups. And like I said, I poured this one a little bit um, higher just so that the middle will have a nice coat of paint. And then I've got my five others around the surface. I'm just going to go ahead and flip these over. It's very bright. Holy cow, that's bright. <laughs> but I knew it would be. And it, it's a statement piece, so it'll be okay. 
So as I had mentioned before, I believe, this will be a little side table in a spare bedroom and we have a comforter set that is yellow, gray, and white. So I thought it'd be really pretty to pour the top of it and yellows and whites. And I chose the custom silver because I figured that would kind of pull a little bit of the gray in as well. And then I will probably stencil uh, mandala on top of this in, I think, a dark gray. And I also mentioned that I am planning to, I haven't decided if I want to paint the base of it black or dark gray or leave it natural wood. So make sure you leave me a comment on that and let me know what your thoughts are on that. Um, and it might be easier for you to decide once you see the top. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling these off. I can get plenty of paint. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this in here though, just in case I need a little bit more. want to have to fight it to get it covered so I want to make sure that I have enough paint so I'm just going to kind of let that flow together a little bit and I'm hoping that it'll kind of pool together and fill in my empty spots there I do have some in here I'll just go ahead and pour that out just kind of help them reach the edges it's very bright right now, but I do know that as it dries, the paint will definitely darken. And I think it'll actually be very pretty when it's done. I'm not much of a yellow person, so um, I don't know that I've ever really done anything this big in all of this yellow. So this will be interesting. And sometimes you just kind of have to branch out. And sometimes you just find a piece that you just kind of want to coordinate. It's kind of an inspiration to do something. So that's kind of what this is. That comforter set is just like a really beautiful comforter set. So I thought, why not have a really fun side table in that bedroom? I'm going to go ahead and torch this so I can pop my bubbles. Just kind of want my heat down lower so that it doesn't go crazy on me. It's going to go nice and slow across. And this also sometimes will create some extra cells as well, which is good because we want this to be a really fun piece. I definitely have enough paint, which makes me happy because I was worried it might be a bit of a stretch. So we have plenty to cover the top as well as go over the sides and that cover too. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start tilting this and I've got paint running off the edges, which is good. Hopefully my head isn't in the way. So I think what I want to kind of do is kind of go in a circular motion if I can, just to kind of get my paint going in the right directions. I'm rocking it back and forth, I need to cover that edge, but I'm going to lose all my paint. Alright, I'm just going to go ahead and turn this. Just have a little bit better grasp on it. Hopefully, you can still see this. I think you can. That's looking pretty marvelous, I think. And then I'm just going to go over here and see if I can't get this last bit covered. It should be good. I think I've ran enough paint off the sides that everything's covered. So I'm going to real quick make sure. I'm extremely happy that I take to the edge of that table. I really love this. I think it's going to be beautiful. Okay guys, I'm going to go ahead and torch this one more time, just to get rid of the air bubbles, because I can still see a few bubbles. Oh, 
right, that's looking pretty darn fabulous. I will take the camera down and show you a little bit um, close up, a better close up of it because obviously you can't see very much from the height that it is. And I apologize for that, but I wanted you to be able to see the whole surface. Okay, so here's a close up. I did shut the lights off because I felt like you can see a little bit more of the detail and I don't have a glare from the lights. It's very pretty. There are some really cool effects with the paints. I do feel like it will continue to change too as it dries. So this will sit for just a couple of days and as soon as it's you know, dry to the touch, it definitely will not be cured yet, but I will have it set for a couple of days and then I'll come back and do the stencil on it. So this will be part one of two parts to this video. And I will, the second part will be stenciling and I'll also show you how I'm going to resin the top of it too. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you'll like and subscribe and have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.